Toronto police announced yesterday that they believe they've cracked an almost 40 year old cold case. On October 3rd, 1984, nine year old Christine Jessup went missing and it wasn't until December of that same year she was found dead in Sunderland, Ontario, just north of Uxbridge. A few months later, Guy Paul Moran, a neighbor of the Jessup family, was brought in for questioning. He was arrested and served jail time. In 1995, after two trials, Guy Paul Moran was finally exonerated because of DNA evidence. The same DNA sample police believe has helped them find the actual killer. Today's announcement is only the first very important answer in this ongoing investigation. It has obviously generated many more questions and we are asking for the public's help as we look for information about Calvin Hoover in an effort to create a timeline of his whereabouts and the last moments of Christine's life. Please take a look at this photo. It is a photo of Mr. Hoover that date back, dates back to the late 1990s. Despite how dated it is, it is our hope that it may jog someone's memory about the events surrounding Christine's disappearance. Paul always, always has said it was science that set him free, and, and absolutely right. And, and certainly, as we saw the science work for him in 1995, we saw it work again for him in 2020. Without the genetic genealogy, which has become a very popular we have now trying to clear people's names or identify perpetrators. I remember picking up the newspaper and there was an article about Guy Paul Morin and this was in between the first and second trial. I didn't know who Guy Paul Morin was, but he had already been acquitted in the first trial. I got knowledge of his case because of the news article and I remember reading the article and I remember also looking at his picture and going, oh my God, they got the wrong guy. And then I became very interested in his case and followed it. I felt I needed to do something and what could I, as somebody who's not a lawyer, do? So I did what I thought, thought the only thing I could do, which was write these two letters, one to Jack Pankowski, who represented him at his uh, second trial, and then one to the Morin family. It was this case, the case of Guy Paul Moran, that gave birth to the nonprofit now known as Innocence Canada. I uh, took on Guy Paul's appeal the day he was convicted. It was July 30th of 1992. And it was two or three months later, I heard someone being interviewed about the case on a, a radio show and found out that there was a group of citizens who had formed a defense committee called the Guy Paul Moran Defense Committee. So I called them up and ultimately they worked with me. We got Guy Paul out on bail in February of 1993 and it was decided by two or three of us that why don't we now broaden out into a, a national organization. We come together because of James Lockyer and Reuben Hurricane Carter. We all met because of the Guy Paul Morin case. And so the founders of the organization all met because of this one case and that was the decision that was made that we would forge ahead and do what we can do to help others receive their freedom as well. Innocence Canada is a group made up of pro bono lawyers and researchers and their goal is to help exonerate those they believe are innocent. According to their website, the group has helped exonerate more than 23 individuals. For City News, I'm Stella Cuisto.